Hey, I'm Jim Johnson, your host here with Contractor Radio, and I want to thank you for taking the time today to listen to our show. And our show is all about you, helping you get control of your business so you can grow your business and find that personal and financial freedom you're after. So hang on tight. Episode's about to start. I wanted to sit down with you today because, first off, Hook Agency's been around, I think you said since like 1819, somewhere in there? Yeah, so... 2016, seven, 2016 is when I went out on my own, but like we went a little harder on roofing around that time. Gotcha, gotcha. So we, we've had a lot of really cool conversations about what exactly it is that you do, but before we get into the deep questions, what exactly does Hook Agency yeah. do? So we help um, contractors get higher on Google, um, whether that's with the ads, which we, we do help people with ads as well, or the organic result. And, I think organic, that main section of Google with all the listing of links and the maps, um, that's stuff that we're particularly specialized at. We're, we're good at both of them. And then we help make beautiful websites. Sure. And basically we try to help people get more leads and Google is a big avenue for that. Gotcha. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about is something that your company actually doesn't do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, because over the course of the past, I would probably say six months from my perspective of what I've noticed, your, the, the amount of content that you shoot, film, photograph, whatever you want to call it, and posting on all platforms, that's something that you have really started to yeah. take a lot more seriously, I think, on a personal sure. level for Hook. Yeah. You, you really got started more so with the funny memes. Yeah. <laughs> before the video really started going. So I, I wanted to talk to you about just specifically content and, and how you think that that has personally helped you out from what you're doing and also how it could potentially help out a contractor who's looking to do it from a more organic way. Absolutely. So I'll say this is like I'm intense with the amount of content I create and comparatively to most SEO companies, we are also intense for what we do Um posting on people's websites, content going on a regular basis. But yeah, the, the actual strategy that I've been doing is is really like make pillar content, like a YouTube video and then in, in a podcast, as ours is a YouTube video and a podcast, and then it turns into, and I've created a system for it to turn into a blog post basically automatically. You know, some a writer is um, assigned to that. Um, then reels so somebody in my company i made it into a little machine internally right where there's people in the company there's somebody in the company that's savvy that identifies all the reels and then there's somebody externally that edits all the reels and it happens um without a lot of my intervention actually no none of my intervention um sometimes there's little mistakes and stuff like that like i'm pretty sure something went out today that said tommy and it was actually Chuck. <laughs> but you know what? You just got to let it fly because it's 80%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I need people. Your vision is limited by perfection. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like if it needs to be perfect, then the vision gets really small. Fair enough. So like I, I'm cool with an, a mistake. I'm cool with a video saying. Tommy, uh, not Chuck. Tommy, <laughs> when it's supposed to be Chuck. Yeah. Even though it'd be better, and there's a reason, it's a positive thing if it was correct. Yeah. But I'm gonna let it go, and I'm not. I didn't even say anything. I might occasionally, like, actually, t like, be a little bit more intentional. But ultimately, like, you have to be okay with a little imperfection when you're on beast mode, right? Yeah, like, yeah. When you're in beast mode, you gotta go hard, and it's not really in this day and age. With, you know, we're not trying to go viral here. We're trying to be intentionally valuable to our core audience, mm -hmm. which isn't that large of an audience. You no, know, not I mean? really. ultimately, I want 500,000, 3,000, and a good day, 10,000 views of roofers. Honestly, mm -hmm. my target market is only 10,000 people probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't necessarily need to, for the world to see it. And sometimes when I'm going after that audience, that larger audience, which I do sometimes, because I've been trying to go viral for, for fun, yeah it's a distraction from my main audience and being of service to them yeah but anyways this day and age you need to put out a ridiculous amount of content to get seen and so uh yeah we've done that at scale it's two it's two reels and then they go out on all the platforms yep so two tiktoks two reels two you know youtube shorts and on instagram too yeah and so essentially over all the spots you just you get a lot of views from that it's not 
you know, like I said, it's not me going viral, but it's, you know, a couple thousand views per video or whatever, and that mm -hmm. ultimately adds up. Of course it does, Some yeah. Some people will, will spend so much time perfecting one video, and it's hard. It's hard to do that this, these days a little bit because it is, uh, you know, what if that one is a dud and it gets 300 views or whatever? You know, it's tough. Mm -hmm. That's the tough part about being in videography these days is yeah. you kind of need the quantity game too. You do. And one of the things that I've learned is like when I first started posting heavily for myself, yeah. everything had to be right. I had to look right. It had to sound right. The message had to be right. All the words had to be right. And I, what I eventually learned was people actually appreciate imperfection mm -hmm. because it makes it more real. Yeah. It, it's, it's a little more relatable when it comes to, to them because none of us are perfect. I think that's one reason why lives do so well on like Facebook and, and all the platforms, but yeah. lives on Facebook do really well because sometimes you're bumbling. I think bit. people like that. I think people like a little like, I don't know. I, you know, I'm trying to get to my next point and like maybe like, I also like feedback. Like we like ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We like our, we like thinking about ourselves. So if we can be part of the, the content, yeah. we're excited. So a lot of times I'll invite people to comment. I'll even shout out their company. Or yep. like shout people out as I'm doing the live because mm -hmm. then people like that. And there's a, even on TikTok too, there's people that like sit there and like write people's names. Mm -hmm. They're seeing themselves in the content. They're like asking people to be involved. You yeah. know, like that's part of it. And you're trying to like, it's, it's a, people, we like ourselves. Well, even just simply like tagging somebody in your, just a typical photo post, yeah. like it, like the with people, tag people portion yeah. on Facebook. Like that, that makes a huge difference on the level of engagement that you get with the stuff that you put out as well. Absolutely. I see a lot of people that don't use all the functions when they're posting, right? Yeah. Like when they're on social, they're not tagging people. They're not saying where they are. They're not, yeah. all of that contributes. I feel like the more data you give Facebook about what's going on there, the more likely they are to show it. It's kind of like SEO in a way, right? The in a way, more, yeah. The more information we give on our page, the more Google is likely to show it because it can it knows what it is and can, when people are searching for something like that, show that page. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's a lot of corollaries, you know, with, with algorithms on social and on Google. And so I've been a student of algorithms. I haven't mastered them, but that's, you know, part of the, the beauty of it. I think like I'm a beginner and I'm gonna continue to, con like I don't, I don't think of myself as a master, but I always said, you know, we have 1.5 million page views on our website every year. Okay. And it's a little less obvious. I'm not an influencer. I don't think of myself as an influencer, really. Mm -hmm. It's cool that a non-influencer, and I had that before, like, even some of this clout from memes, roofing memes, which yeah. I, I'd say that's the closest I've come to being, like, light, light influencer <laughs> yeah. roofing. But, like, I had 1.5 million page views on our website. And it, I wasn't an influencer because I knew how to work that algorithm. Yeah. So you can learn how to work alg algorithms and you don't have to be an influencer or even like involve your personality. Because some people want to avoid that. Yeah. For various reasons. Sometimes they're scared and sometimes they just want to build a business that doesn't require them. Yeah. And, and I've also learned, and, and I think you've learned this as well. You have to define what your success looks like for you on social media. Yeah. You know, some people, they define success by the amount of views they get or likes or engagements or anything like that. I don't really care so much about that anymore. Yeah. And it's because I meet people all the time that are like, hey, man, I see what you're doing on social media. Yeah. Like, I'm keeping up with you that way. And I'm like, but nobody, why don't you engage with it? Why don't you comment? Yeah. Why don't you do something? You know, and, it, and it, it used to frustrate me, but now I'm like, don't let it frustrate you because you never know who's seeing what you're doing. So yeah. I started defining my success as how many messages am I getting? Mm -hmm. Because that's the people who want to do something. Those are the people who are taking it seriously. So for me, if I go, if I go three days without receiving a message about something that I do professionally on Facebook, my content's not working. And yeah. that's how I judge it now. So there's something called dark social. So they call it dark social when somebody's like, you could send a video to a friend mm -hmm. you didn't like the video the content creator has no idea that you ever viewed it but then they're like sending it and there's like people there's so many people 
seeing it. And a lot of these platforms now show you impressions. Yeah. But you don't know how much of that is real or whatever. Yeah. I think the thing that's kind of, um, you know, a siren that's attractive about TikTok is essentially, I think it's like the microsecond is a view. They call it, they call it a view. Yeah. They, you could watch half a second and they're going to call it a view. So people are out here like obsessed with this this short form video thing and it's like really how much real business did you get from that That's they're obsessed like, with the algorithm yeah. not the short form video is what they're yeah. obsessed with yeah and there's something to be said about there's you should be wielding whatever is working at that moment in content yeah. for your business you should be using short form video now you should yeah. be going hard but the the question is how much of it is turning into business mm -hmm. and if it's not turning into business then it's just a glamour metric and it's just distracting to what you're doing as your main thing. And what I've learned is I've, so I've got a lot of real business, millions of dollars of business from what I do on social media and, you know, in our website and mm -hmm, obviously mm -hmm. like millions of dollars of business and I track it back and I, I know, I know where stuff comes from and stuff like that. But ultimately if you are s sitting out here just focusing on views and stuff like that and literally the content has nothing to do with what your main business at, mm -hmm. is you you really could waste a lot of time and yeah. i have i certainly have for i i feel like it was kind of for fun but i've, I've realized it is a time waster to sit there and try to like go viral yep then that's kind of what i found as well I, I don't go viral anymore the one video that i do have that went viral had nothing to do with business whatsoever yeah. and i was like this did me no good yeah it made me feel good for about seven or eight hours and you can then post the metrics you can post a screenshot yeah i can post a screenshot internet. and but at the end of the day it doesn't do anything now I don't mean to and take I anything. One, I just had one kind of do that. Like, to yeah. me, it was kind of big. It did like 130,000 views or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's great, though. That's but awesome. It's great, but it literally no business result whatsoever. Yeah. Like, in lo like, honestly, it was a distraction for a couple days. Well, and again, it, it, it turns into what do you define as success Yeah. In, in social media from the organic side. And the last thing I'll say about this, and I only bring this up because you said you've been obsessed with algorithms and you follow them. TikTok's the only algorithm and that I'm aware of from a social network where the algorithm chases you instead of the other way around. Mm -hmm. So on Facebook, we can set our own algorithm of what we want to see yeah. by based off of what we like, on, what we comment on, what we share, all that good stuff. And they'll continue to feed more of what we engage with. Whereas on TikTok, the way that they distribute content, they distribute it based on what's getting the most views, not necessarily what I would want to engage mm -hmm. with. And that algorithm chases us, which is why it's been so it's addictive. Kind of, it's which kind is of the lowest common denominator, too. Like, yeah, they, they ultimately like they just want to keep, you know, we want to keep people on the app. Like, and ultimately I get that and it's good. But. Well, that's what all social platforms do. Yeah. But Facebook has a different way of doing it than what yeah. TikTok does. Sure. TikTok takes what's getting the most engagement. Let's continue to show it because they have different levels of distribution on TikTok, yeah. depending on how well the video has performed. But I want to kind of steer away from that just for a second because there's one thing that we were talking about off camera that I thought was really interesting and it's the difference in styles of SEO. Yeah. So you guys are obviously aggressive. You make that abundantly clear. But what is the difference between something like a, like a content SEO and like backlink SEO? Yeah. Like what's the difference? So ultimately there's, those are the two main levers you can pull. Like let's say we're in the cockpit and we're trying to crank up our speed. We're, Time is a big factor with SEO. So no matter what you do, and I know all the SEOs say that, the scam artists and the legitimate companies, yeah. time is a like actual really important part of SEO. Yep. But time plus content mm -hmm. and a good amount of it. Like the absolute ideal is like a heavy duty content velocity. Yeah. And then links from reputable websites back to your website. One's in your niche, like home service niche. Mm -hmm websites and local websites that are linking to your website. So those are like the two main levers. If we could crank both those, we'd be flying. And so basically what I tell people is like if they're, or I'm looking, people ask me to like check out their company that they're using, right? They're like, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to see what they're doing. And sometimes they're doing good stuff. And I actually tell prospects when their current SEO is doing good stuff. I'm like, it's just time. Mm. I'm sorry, it's just time. Or your market is hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're in 
San Antonio. You're in Minneapolis or wherever, beast, yeah. You know? So ultimately, either go after more suburbs mm. to get like those earlier wins. To, to If you can rank for five suburbs, you could eat for, you know, you could be a $10 million, $20 million company. You don't have to own a major market, right? So there's a lot of different little components there, but ultimately your your SEO company should be creating a good chunk of content. We do 3,000 words every month, okay. and it's keyword targeted, 3,000 words, or, or and, excuse me, I should say, and getting links from other websites back to yours. And every single month we're getting links from other websites back to clients, and websites. I, and ultimately those two things are the big, if they're not doing that, that's they're not being aggressive with yeah. SEO. There's ways to do SEO where you're just like tweaking the technical side of it, meta titles and descriptions. Those things do matter. They mm. really do matter. We just think of it as 20% of our overall deliverables because it's easy to get. Some people will just keep on giving you a an audit every month yeah. and you got this list of keywords and yeah. you got like some analytics. Analytics are not going to change the trajectory or velocity mm. of your company's rankings. Yeah. You know? You have to push effort and more effort than your competitors because this is a competition. Yeah. So you have to actually, there's got to be effort done every single month. The technical stuff is part of it, but it's just not going to move the needle by itself. Yeah. I think the content SEO portion is easy for people to wrap their head around. Yep. You can see it. It's tangible. You see what's happening. Correct. Yep. Where, where I think SEO gets difficult to begin to understand specifically in the contracting world is the backlink side of it everybody knows they need it but nobody truly understands it well, if some, that if yeah. that makes sense some people do play it down they're like i don't you don't you know can't do that or like google tells you not to because it google does tell you not to by the way fair enough um there's ways to do this that are so that are natural mm. you know what i mean we do local directory listings we do guest posting which is yeah, writing for other websites and getting in that website a link back to yours. We do press release distribution, things like that that are kind of, it's a natural way to get links back to your website. Yeah. Those are, it's basically, it's a simple thing. If you had a friend, let's say you do have a friend that has a website that has a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All you got to do is say, you know what, Tim? I want to, I want to uh, write a blog post about this particular topic, like for a roofer, you know, yeah, of course. I want to write a topic about um, what size of hail creates damage. Can mm -hmm. I write that article for you? Mm -hmm. And if they actually have traffic to their website, it's a good, a decent amount of traffic. Yeah, of course. Well, define a decent amount of traffic. Like, I would say like thousand plus people on the website a month. A, month, a decent okay. amount of traffic. Like if, if they have that, and there's ways that you can see this from the outside. Arefs, a -H -R -E -F -S com or SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush.com. Yep. I love SEMrush. I love that. They're so fun. And you can like look at your competitors and yep. you can look at what they're ranking for and yeah. you can steal those keywords. Yep. It's a beautiful thing. There is an opportunity to then tell them, hey, is it okay if I could write this blog post? It's going to be 500 plus words and I'm, I'm going to make it good. Like I'm going to actually make it solid. And then you'd write that blog post for them and then in it, Ideally, in the first couple of paragraphs, you'd link back to your website. Yeah, of course. So, so the, that content that you're creating for that person's website, yep. some people are like, I, I don't want to make that. Well, that is a fundamental component to yes. all marketing, creating heavy-duty content. Mm -hmm. And there's so many easy ways to get into this. And the first way that I like to tell people about is, what are the objections that you've had this week? Mm -hmm. We all get a little tinge of like anger yeah. Or like sadness or frustration when a, a prospect rejects us, right? Mm. What if I told you you don't have to feel that? What if I want you to put this in a spreadsheet or a note on your phone? Every single time somebody has an objection, they turn you down for whatever reason, write it down and then create an empathetic but comprehensive video to address that objection. It has multiple prongs. We can put it on social media. We can put it on YouTube. We can cut it up into reels. We can use it for sales training for our team because it's hard to do this, right? I am about to hire a sales assistant. I've got 20 videos that that person, can, all the objections that we experience on a regular basis that I've already made. And I didn't make them that, I mean, I know that this is a, a an abomination for a video person, but I didn't make them that fancy. Some of them were just me walking around my neighborhood after work. 
It, it's, you know? it's what works. You and, know, and I mean, so it is. If you have your 20 objections and you have videos giving empathy and comprehensive like reasoning why, let's say more expensive. That's a, that's a very common objection. Yeah, of why, course. Why would I go with you if you're more expensive? Mm -hmm. Well, we had somebody that just bought a website from us that we are twice the cost of the, the nearest competitor. And we've done a lot of soul searching and work around why we're expensive for mm. websites. We we believe in what we do, and this this kind of work, and this kind of videos will not only be really good for your sales process. It's going to be really good for your internal understanding, and you're sharing that information with people on your team, training, leadership, mm. and people need this content on the internet. Most most roofing companies, most contractors, home service businesses are not creating this kind of content because they're scared nah. don't don't be scared it's true have fun yeah and that's what it's supposed to be if it's not fun it's done right yeah like you got you got to enjoy it and you know i'll be talking tomorrow you know to the sales guys about how they can support from a content creation side and you know social media and doing all that good stuff and make it to where it's easy for them because there are ways to make it easy yeah there's ways that you can combine your personal life with your work life yeah. to be able to promote your company and what you're doing. You don't have to do it every day, but there are ways to do it. And that's actually part of what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. We're going to have fun. Excited. Man, I appreciate you sitting down Thank with us, Tim. Sir. We had fun. And um, guys, seriously, if you're interested in you know SEO work, Google Ads or anything to that extent, I do recommend that you give Tim at Hook Agency a call. We don't partner with people that we don't know do good work here at CCP. So obviously, that is a testament that you do good work. And if um, we suck ass, then you can just talk to them and be like, these guys suck ass. So you know what's cool? Hey, I'm cutting through the noise here for a second. I just want to say that ultimately, we care a lot about our reputation. Uh, yeah, we're going to do our absolute best to make sure that a referral from you guys is honored of course and so ultimately we'd love to chat with you and that goes both ways yeah, exactly. by the way if you guys need help from us and not just in marketing i know i'm the marketing coach but in anything you know with with sales with hr with financing to culture and mission and vision and leadership you know ccp that's that's all of those are pillars in what we coach marketing is just one of eight or nine pillars that we coach on here so we can help in numerous different ways but man i appreciate you brother absolutely be good okay, and peace out peace Ah. <sighs>You're still here? Well, you must have thought it was great. Make sure to like and subscribe to Contractor Radio and never miss an episode because we're here to help you get better at what you do.